something. Andrew's invited his mate on our show uh, without my consent. This, this guy's in our house without my consent. So he's I, a well-known folk singer. He's he's amazing. Matt Shea. I, 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 to, it, I'm just going to have to bite my tongue and listen to you guys talk most of this emergency meeting. Otherwise, otherwise I'm going to walk off. Matt, so, Matt, can you introduce yourself? Tell them about your singing career. Tell them where you're from, etc. Yes. Yeah, so I'm, I'm actually not a folk singer at all. In what? The slightest. No, sorry. What? I'm, Are you calling my brother a liar? You lied to case, me. Yes. To he's been on this. My, he's been on this podcast for one minute. He's already calling you a liar. You lied to me to get into my house. You said you're a folk singer and you're going to sing to the world. No, the truth is I'm actually here to make a documentary about both of you um, for Vice. And I'm just here to observe and listen and, and learn the, the Tate way. I thought, no chance. Were, I thought you were a singer, my friend. Now I'm extremely disappointed. I thought you were useless as an individual, but you could sing. But now that that's gone, what do you have left? Do something. Do Show a talent. Show the people. Do something. Prove you're not useless. Go. I, I make documentaries. Sorry. I, you'll see when the film comes out. <laughs> lame do a poll tristan if it, is anybody impressed by matt shea okay poll. Let's, let's find out if anybody's impressed by matt shea is matt impressive the answer is no you're out why do you want to do why do you want to do a video on us tell us what's so interesting about top g most compendious richest trillionaire kickboxing world champion sexy tall smart rich i mean why am i so interesting please humor me I, I, I want to do a documentary about the phenomenon that is you and your brother, because so many people, especially men, seem to really like what you're saying and follow you. And you know, I just want to find out you know, what's behind your philosophy and what makes you tick. And Do you like what I say? Um, you know that I don't agree with a lot of the things that you say, <laughs> but, uh, but I think you're a sweet guy on the inside. What would you do if a yoga fired you? If you what? Yoga fire. How he, would you deal with that? He could shoot fire from his hands. How would you deal with that? If you actually sprayed fire out of your hands, yoga maybe? fire. Well, how would you handle that? You're making right. a documentary. You're chatting shit, saying I'm things I'm not, and I yoga fire you. What next? That would be terrible. I would, I would scream. My skin would probably bubble, and I'd run away and stop, drop, and roll. And sounds about survive. right. So keep that in mind when you're making this fucking little show. Oh, I'm already terrified. I've seen the knives and the giant fire thing. It's called a liar. Yeah. yeah, when you smoke giant cigars, you need a big liar. Where's your cigar? Um, yeah, you gave me this actually. I, Has I it mean, gone out? It has. Yeah, I have to. Admit Do you that. think cigars are free? Amateur hour. That's like fifty dollars. You know. Listen, that. Brokey, smoke it up. You yeah. never smoke anything that expensive in your life. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay, You're gonna make a video on me. At least you can smoke a cigar. Have some respect. You didn't even sing on my podcast. It's all been a famous, a fagazi <laughs> from the beginning. What do you guys like about these anyway? They make you strong. Really? They, they make you stronger. Of the three people you could see on screen. Who would be the third strongest? Of, of us three? Yes. In terms of what? Physical strength or strength of the heart? Well, I'd say everything, but let's go physical. Okay, physical, I think... Uh, You'd be the weakest. I'd be the weakest. Who smokes the fewest cigars? Me, yeah. Do you see a correlation? Um, I see correlation without causation, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. We can come back with the causation part, but you do see a correlation, correct? Yeah. I want you to Wonderful. know that I've actually been... If you want to talk about correlation and causation, I want you to know that I've actually been protecting you your entire life. Me, me specifically? You specifically. Have you ever been attacked by a tiger? Uh, no, actually. No. That's because for your entire life, I have been protecting you from tigers. You may not know this, but I spoke to the Tiger King. Mm. I spoke to the Tiger Lords. I spoke to each tiger individually, as well as making sure you were shadowed at all time. You spoke by, to Joe Exotic. Exactly. Shadowed at all time by my War Room Elite Tiger Killing Squads to make sure you were never, ever attacked by a tiger. The only reason you're not ripped to shreds is because of me. You owe me a massive thank you. Thank if you, you piss guys. me off, if you piss me off, I, really appreciate that. I will take that away. Unleash the tigers. Unleash the tigers. And you'll be walking through central London and you'll be torn to shreds. So you came on this show promising to sing to everybody. I've been protecting you your entire fucking life. I think you owe me at least a little fucking jingle. Do something. By the way, 68% of the polls said you're unimpressive. This is your chance to reverse the poll. Ask, can you ask what the 30 g present find impressive about me? I'm curious to know. That is that is actually a good question. That's a good question, right? Yeah. Well as as the chat, what is impressive about Matt Shea, the folk singer who won't sing? What's impressive? Sing for us. You said, come on, I've been protecting you for tigers your whole life. Have you been bitten by a shark? Uh, no. There you go. I've been that, doing double. That's, that's down to me, actually. I'm doing the sharks. He's doing the tigers. Thank We're keeping guys. them all at bay. Thank you. Sing a song. Nothing, nothing. This guy's poor. This guy's a geek. Nothing. He's an NPC. Nothing. He's short. That's the. I'm actually not that short. I, how tall? How tall are you? I'm five foot eleven and three quarters of an inch. Sorry, you said five, and you, once you said five, yeah, it was over. Short. Can you sing a song like song you promised? 
I didn't promise that. You do have an impressive haircut. Somebody said that. Hey. One person. Thank you. Of the 8,100 people watching us. Let me ask you. you a question. Have you ever seen the clown that hides from gay people? I... <laughs> Have you seen no, him? No, I haven't seen you haven't. Found that Isaac So you've never seen him? No. Cool. And cool. you've been all around the world, right? Mm -hmm. And you've never seen the clown that hides from gay people? I still haven't seen him, no. Strange. Is he here somewhere? Strange. Well, yeah, he's right here. I see him. I see him. You don't see him. Strange. <laughs> funny that. Yeah, cool. Funny. So we understand. You've never seen the clown. He won't sing. Yep. Uh, what else could you add to this podcast? I don't You've know. not seen the clown. I'm... He won't sing. He won't smoke his fucking cigar. Someone just called him Malcolm in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, that's not fair. I literally am in the middle. Yeah, yeah, that is a bit unfair. All right, let's be nice to our vice friend. Let's be nice. He's your friend. He is my friend, and he's going to do a, a hit piece on me. So let me be nice to him before he does a hit piece. He's, this is definitely a hit piece. I've warned my brother that this is a setup, and this is what everyone I in the chat is I don't care. I want everyone in the world to know when you plan on making a hit piece for me, you can sit there editing away, jerking your cock, going, oh, I'm going to make a hit piece, and he's going to really, really upset. I don't care. Do hit pieces. Say bad things about me. I'm uninterested. I've clearly conquered the internet. I'm clearly unstoppable. I'm like the Borg. You've invited the liberal news media to come. They can all life. come. I'm like the Borg. The more you shoot me with your phasers, the more I adapt. Harder to kill. Just don't look in that room because our kidnapped victims are in that room. Correct. Here, Vice, let me show you a video of my Bugatti, which costs $5.2 million. Big and juicy, and twist, and take real bad man in the blood clot. You understand, eh? Expensive Bugatti Chiron Pure Sport, one of only 50 in the world, one of my 27 supercars. They're going to say it's in Germany getting its tire changed, and they're going to say that we don't own one. That's what they're going to do. You know, I wasn't going to say that, but you saying that does beg the question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tristan, why are you giving the liberal media ideas? Yeah. Exactly. The I fact mean, that our name stitched into the seats is clearly a scam. Right. We got some super chats. We got some questions here. Let's see. We've got any questions for you. $500 super chat. Shout out to the Tate brothers. You've conquered the internet. Respect, brother. Thank you very much. That's smooth, smooth Black Alex. That's from my boy, Smooth Black Alex. He said it's, 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 it's his entry fee for Romania. He's, he's driving through Romania. He's going to come see us next week. So. Smooth, about, smooth Black Alex, you're welcome anytime. Can't wait to see you, bro. See if we have any questions for so our th friend here. This guy just paid five favorite no, you guys. Well, no, he paid $500 to the Save Joe Exotic Fund, because that's where all the money goes. All the money goes to Saving Joe Exotic, because we're going to save him. Have you watched Tiger King? Uh, yeah, I have. Okay, have I been protecting you from tigers, yes or no? Uh, yeah, apparently. Okay, we when all he said know he spoke to the king of tigers, who do you think he was referring to? Have you not I, seen the video on my YouTube where I call him in jail and say that Carol Baskin fucked him up and I'm going to get him out? No. You well, don't even watch my YouTube channel. We're raising bro. money. All the super chats here. Do, do I look like I need money? Um, Maybe no. if you keep burning my cigars and not smoking them properly, I'm going to go bankrupt. <laughs> but until it. then, I don't need money. So well, the money goes to help our boy Joe Exotic. You need you need yeah. to watch my Tate speech and learn about our missions in life. You, you watch Tiger King, right? You do believe that Joe Exotic should be free, don't you? I don't really remember the plot of Tiger King. He was trying to run a tiger business. Everyone started telling stories about him and lying to the police about him and shit. Horrible. Poor guy. This is what happens when you save a guy from tigers his whole life. He has no respect for the tiger king. He doesn't, does he? Won't even sing a song. He doesn't. Wait, wait. Are Vice going to call us mad, weird names like racist and homophobic? Because Joe Exotic is a homosexual and all of our money goes to help him out. So That's true. I just want to put that out there before you guys start labeling us with stupid labels. I also want to put out there, if you guys decide to do a hit piece, that you are a cisgendered white male. And I am an ethnic minority. I am half mm. African-American, as you can tell. And as a person of color, I find it extremely offensive if you're going to do a hit piece on me. And that will be my reply because I think that's why you're doing it. A bunch of white men have turned up to my house. They're filming me as a person of color and they intend on trying to paint me in a negative light. If I was white like all of you, you wouldn't do that. So keep that in mind. The leader of the war room, the highest ranking member of the war room outside myself and my brother is a Jew as well. So before you start saying stupid things, because I don't trust you 1%. I, I don't want you in my song. house. Sing like you promised. You haven't said but this. You're, Sing a song. Andrew, it's a setup. This guy's the friendly face. They send him here. Well, I have Sing a song. And his editor don't and his voiceover Jack guy Tom. are going to be like, well, you know. You I've, promised I'll, to I'll, sing just, to me. I've just sat here. I've, I've just, I've said. If you set up, I won't kick Vice out of my house. I don't you care. How long a, did you creating a straw? Man. How long did you fly? How long did it take you to fly here? About three hours. Would so. you be upset if the documentary and all ended? I just kicked you out right now. What would you do? Yeah, I'd be very upset. Please don't do You're that. Not fired. You're gonna have to leave, bro. You're gonna have to leave. I'm sorry. <laughs> don't make me call the security. I don't look. I'm gonna. I'm, I'll give you some chance. Well, are we I'm, done with this guy? I think a few more minutes. Or no, are we done with no, him? No, no. You can sing now, or you're off the pod. That's fair. I, I, I'm, I don't think I can sing. Why not? Just sing a little jingle. I can't sing when I'm nervous and there's sing the Mr. Producer in, song. I'm in between two Tate brothers and they're both incredibly hench and good at. Oh, I see. Because because we're half black, we're violent. 
Is that what it is? Is it racism? Typical. Is that the card he's cisgendered playing? white male? Trying to bring the, trying to bring down the black. Man. We can see how they're coming at us. Mm. It's fine. Horrible. No, it's no problem. Yeah, Hit piece. It's fine. No problem. I haven't said anything. Don't worry about it. Just because I'm wearing a gun, I'm violent. Is that how it is? Just because I got knives all over the table and I'm a kickboxing world champion, I'm violent. Well, it's actually, you know, that's something I might maybe, maybe respond to. If you are wearing a gun and you have knives, that does make you a little bit violent. It makes, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. It makes me security aware. Security conscious. If you have a knife and fork in your hand or a violent man. <laughs> you have the knife and fork I used to cut my meal. I use, I use these things for other, he used it to cut the cigar. Yeah, I, did I not use the knife to cut your cigar? What would you do if a pigeon came in here? You'd ask me, pull the I strap, no idea kill the pigeon. Be. That's what I you do. No, I wouldn't. Pest control. Listen, I'm tired of I'm tired of being accused of things. Uh, this is absolutely unacceptable. You've accused in my own yourself house. of things. Absolutely unacceptable. Do we kick him off the pod? Well, it's got to be a poll. It's got to be, be a poll. poll. It's gonna be a poll. Do we keep him or do we kick him off? Keep Matt. Yes or no? It's gonna be interesting. In the meantime, let's uh, talk about here. Do you want to see? Should I put on on the uh, screen? Should I show the rest of the vice crew to the people at home? So that's the rest of the vice crew. They seem like a lovely bunch of guys. They're good at dancing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but they sent their singer to our party. You didn't even see. So they're here. And they're uh, doing a documentary on me, which is going to be very fair and unbiased. I'm extremely sure. <laughs> and uh, they lied to me about singing. So here they are. And it's... Uh, I want, I want, I want everyone to know that I, I'm, I'm being dragged into this. I'm agreeing to the documentary because Andrew thinks it's a good idea. And as his brother, I trust his judgment. But man, do I dislike these people. I know it's not, it's not, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. It's no problem. What they say on the poll? Uh, it's 51%. So you've got a, a few more votes, guys. <laughs> it's keep, close. It's 51% to keeping you. Keep Matt. Yes. Yeah, 51%. Guys like the video. If you're watching. Yeah. Like press the like button, share it with your friends. Message needs to go worldwide. So Matt, why did you decide to make documentaries? Let's educate the people at home. I, talk, talk into the mic if you don't mind. Because I'm just really interested in the world. Sorry. I'm just interested in the world. I'm interested in the people in it. And you two are at the very least, very interesting people. And I want to know what's behind that. What, how old were you when you made your first one? What was your first documentary about? Um, my first documentary was about shit. I don't even remember. I've done so many. Any of you know what my first documentary was about? Oh, it was about competitive gaming. Yeah, it was about esports. That actually leads into something very interesting because I've been going on Twitch lately and mm. getting all the Twitch records because anywhere I go, everyone mm. watches. And uh, Twitch is a cesspool. It's a cesspool it's of degeneracy and sadness and just weakness. You have 15-year-olds getting paid millions to play video games. Well, I don't understand is this. These people can command audiences of millions, 500,000 per stream while they're playing video games. And every single person watching them is aspires to sit in a chair get fat, play video games. I told guys, you know, be, you know, uh, do some push-ups. and I'm horrible for some reason. You're like I have, I have haters come at me for saying that, you know, do some push-ups and be healthy. You're a misogynist, Tristan. But yeah. Why do you guys think that you have haters? We have haters because we say things that are provocative. I'm not, I'm not ignorant. I know what I say. I know why it upsets people and it's fine. And also the way that the world works, I believe that our haters believe that we're wrong. And I completely understand that. And I get why they think that they are right and I am wrong, but the well, sheep thinks the wolf's wrong. Yeah, exactly. The sheep thinks the wolf's wrong. And a lot of it's like ostrich, right? So it's very easy for people to say that doesn't matter anymore. We live in a civilized society, but it's really just hiding your head in the sand. Cool. It doesn't what, what does it feel like when people react, when the haters react to something that you say or do? I think it's funny. Yeah, I feel nothing. It's, it's, it's genuinely hilarious. I, I, I do find it extremely funny that I can control people's emotions like that. I have not outsource the ability to upset me to anybody else. If I want to be upset, it's my own conscious decision. If anybody can control your emotions, they can control you. If I can make you happy or sad, I can control and influence how you act and how you think and what you do. So to some degree, you're a slave. I'm absolutely apathetic to the, um, the opinions of other people because if they can make me happy or sad, even happy, people giving me praise really has no effect. And people being sad to me, people being mean to me really has no effect. I don't get sad or happy either way. It's all internal as I decide myself. Otherwise, you're controlled. I don't want to be controlled by anybody. Well, everybody seems to like your questions and they voted for you to stay, which brings me on to my answer to your exact question. It's like a poll because you're talking about 
people who come at you and hate you on the internet, etc. So here's what will happen. I'll look at my Instagram inbox if I ever have time. And there'll be 10 to 15 beautiful women saying, oh, I'd love to come and hang out with you. Oh, I'd love to. I'd love you to come here. When are you next in Israel or LA or Ethiopia? Or when are you here? And beautiful women write me this. And then someone will send me some message of some overweight troll talking about how horrible I am. And I'm just like, it is, that's, it's democracy, isn't it? I don't care. Like, why would that bother me when all of the women that I think I'd like to associate with are, you know, are reaching out? But obviously, I'm a good Christian man. I never respond to those messages, but. Right, so you want to tell them that you're here for a war room test, aren't you, Mister Mister? Yeah, why are you here in my house? Uh, Justify yeah. it to me. Um, well, yeah, I've been I've been basically asked to invited to participate in the war room. I have no idea what's in store. Um, yeah, so but the, I'm a willing participant. A willing participant. That's so right. It means that we can also make a film and and get to know you guys. Yeah, correct. So the war room has events five times a year, and you're coming to an event called The Test, which is a rite of passage for men. It's something that people can do and complete to say that they've done it and completed it. It's designed to be difficult, both mentally and physically. You knew you were coming to this, so I trust for the last few months you've been preparing rigorously, obviously. Uh, no, I actually haven't at all. What have, you, what have you been doing? Uh, Esports. Not very much, to be honest. T tell us an average day in the life of Matt, the filmmaker. Um, walk my dog, uh, do work, walk my dog again, go to sleep. Yeah. That's not going to prepare you for the test. How many push ups do you do per day? Uh, on days that I work out, I'll sometimes do 40 or 50 push ups. Uh, well, you do work out. I'll, that's, sometimes. That's, that's good. Sometimes. What's the most mentally challenging thing that's happened to you in the past two years? Um, the most mentally challenging things that have happened to me, I mean, I've, I've done some documentaries about some very difficult things. I did a documentary about death. I had to, it was about euthanasia. I had to get to know people and kind of yeah, watch them die. I get that. Yeah. That was, uh, that was difficult to face death, you know, in that way. Yep. Emotionally difficult. And, you know, it, are you ready to face it again? Um, am I facing death? death we face death. We face death every day. <laughs> That's how it works. My friend, do welcome we? to the mm. test. It's going to be very interesting. I will really want to okay. see how you do. You are being judged. Is there a risk of death? There's always a risk of death. There is a risk of death flying to Romania, the plane mine crash. Okay. Right. But is there of more of a risk of death? Don't than worry. You Why are you worried? Don't worry about it. <laughs> fishing, for, fishing for spoilers. Don't worry about it, bro. Just sing a song. Be happy. You're going to be oh, fine. Man. What's there to worry about? I actually have a little trailer for the test is coming and I'll play it. That might give, some indication as to what's happening, but that's about it. So that's the most difficult thing you think you've faced in the last two years. And how often do you train or work out or that kind of thing? Oh, it up and down. So I used, there have been years where I've worked out every day and there's been years where I've worked out never. What's the difference in your mentality when that happens? Do you feel different inside? Yeah, no, I, I definitely feel worse when I'm not exercising. So when you were talking earlier, when I, would, I asked us to rate us on strength, you said, what about strength of heart? What about strength of mind? What do you what do you do every day to to prepare yourself for strength of heart and strength of mind? What do you do to train those attributes? Because we do physical training to prepare them. Because I think a, a strong body is a strong mind. How do you think you can have a strong mind without a stronger body? No, I think you're probably right. I think uh, they they definitely go hand in hand. I would say to have a strong heart, you have to be open and sensitive. You know, unafraid of showing your emotions, unafraid to cry, to yeah. hug your fellow man. Unafraid of showing your emotions is very dangerous. I think men have testosterone. And if you give a big, strong man um, the blank check of showing your emotions whenever you like, that's the kind of guy who's going to end up beating his children or beating his wife or assaulting somebody or hurting people. I, I think that men need the ability to suppress their emotions. Um, would you disagree? Um, I think there's definitely times when suppressing your emotions are, are good. But you ever been angry and wanted to hit somebody? Of course. Oh, you know, I think real men really express their emotions. So you should have hit that guy and ended up in jail. Yeah, just knock him out. Yeah. Isn't that what you're saying? Express your emotions. How can I ask bro? you a question? Do you guys ever hug each other? I hug people. There's yeah. nothing wrong with hugging people. There's nothing wrong with being a Do you ever hug each other, though? Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. What is wrong with that? It's not like okay. a... Yeah. There's you, nothing you, wrong with that. Shake hands, hug each other. I think that a lot of modern society, and I really just dis dislike this, is... Uh, trying to make uh, platonic male friendships gay or trying to make fun of platonic male love and platonic male friendships. I love my friends. I, I take a bullet for my friends. I've, I've, I've stood up against, against armed men for my brother. Um, you know, when you read classical literature, if you're a friend of, of a fan of Alexander Dumas and you read his three musketeers novels, they'll say things to each other. Like I love you with all of my heart. And that was written in the 1800s. Nowadays you tell your friend that and suddenly people want to make fun of you. People want to call you gay. That's, um, there's nothing wrong with, with, with loving your friends and loving your brothers and, and giving them hugs and, you know, do you yeah, love your, it's very healthy. Do you love your friends, Matt? Yeah, definitely. 
Would you go to, would you die for your friends? Some of them. If, okay. Some. Yeah, that's fair. If you had to go to war, would you call your friends or would you try and find someone else? I probably, I prefer your friends. Yeah. So why is it war? Yeah. <laughs> probably. I don't, I don't yeah. blame you. Um, but, I'll, actually, I take that back. Okay. Cause obviously I want to make sure that my army is fighting, you know, ethically and following the Geneva convention and do you and actually, that. and I don't know. Yeah. What I'd if like the enemy is an example? To what the, if the enemy isn't? Well, then I'd like to show my moral strength is greater than them. You by, by dying. Correct. You want to die in a ditch for your moral strength? If it mean if it, if it means dying in a ditch, then yeah, I would say if it means that we were able to fight a just war. Lie. His history is written by, is written by the victor. History is written by the victor, and you're going to go down in history as those who lost and those who were wrong because you're all dead. So if your enemy is using tactics that you disagree with, why would you stick to the rules? If I'm playing chess with you and I just move my pieces over yours and completely break all of the rules, why would you sit there trying to make fair moves instead of just tipping the board over and saying fuck this? You're going to die, and they're going to say that you broke the convention anyway because they're going to write the history book. So what's the point in dying? I mean, again, I'm just here to observe, and we don't want to get too into it, but I guess because Answer the know, question. cruelty and, uh, and being immoral begets more cruelty and immorality. And you know, if, if we had an army, I would hope that they would try and be less cruel. Very um, idealistic more. of you. Unrealistic, Perhaps, there, yeah. there was but a time, idealistic. Yeah. In the age of chivalry and, and gentlemanly warfare, this was a, a concept that you could actually apply. People would fight their one battle, the kings would write each other notes and letters, divide up the territory, etc. But the modern world doesn't work that way, and the world has only, only ever worked that way for a period of about 200 years in Europe. Besides that, it's doggy dog out there. Let's and I would advise you to uh, yeah. fix up. Let's show our man the test video that was made years ago before Corona. And this is what's coming to you. So pay attention to the screen. Now you can't hear the sound, but the sound is just uh, music. Can they hear us speaking? Yes. Wow, this, this does worry me. Ooh. That guy just died. What do you think you're going to have to go through? If you had to guess what it is, what do you think it is? <laughs> I mean, is it is it like a like a physical training regimen that's really, really intense. There's no training. Bro. Jesus Christ. This looks terrifying. There's no training. What else do you think it could be? Um, I don't know. I'm just getting more and more uh, sort of worried about it every every time you say something new. Um, yeah, that's a good way to be. Yeah, that's a good way. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Right. We have to do um, our normal broadcasting. Okay. It's been very, very nice to have you on the show. You've oh, been extremely yeah. interesting. Your singing yeah. voice has disappointed absolutely nobody. I want you to know that you've been a fantastic guest and you are welcome back anytime. Thank you very much. You're not. And, uh, he is, out, Tristan, he is. Look out for the film. Yeah, he is. Let Matt is welcome back anytime. While we move, I'm going to play a uh, TikTok of my Jacob and Cole watch because...